Hello everyone, welcome you all back. In this video, we are going to see the problems on heat exchangers that is in LMTD method, right? So, to solve the problem in heat exchangers, there are two methods available. One is LMTD method and second one is NTU method. There are, you know that uh, there will be four temperatures given in the problem. That is one thing is uh, hot fluid input temperature, hot fluid outlet temperature, similarly cold fluid inlet temperature and cold fluid outlet temperature. There will be four temperatures available. So in these four temperatures, there are two or three temperatures will be given in the problem, right? So once three or four uh, temperatures are given in the problem, you have to choose the LMTD method to solve the problem. In case in the problem only two temperatures are given, then you have to go for N2U method or otherwise in the problem itself, they will be mentioned that it, it will be LMTD method or you have to solve the problem by LMTD method or by NTU method. So unless otherwise, you have to choose LMTD or NTU method based on the number of temperatures given in the problem. Before getting into the problem, I will explain how to use the data book. Here, it is a data book. So in the data book at the page number 151, in the page number 151, the formulas are available for LMTD method and NTU method. Now, I am going to explain only the formulas for LMTD method. So, now, basically, for heat exchangers, you know that Q equal to UA del T LM. So, this del T LM formula is available here. So, this LT LM for parallel flow is given here and parallel for and for counter flow is given here. Similarly, for multi-pass and cross flow heat exchangers, you know that Q equal to F into UA del T LM. So, here this star is given because for cross flow heat exchangers, you have to take the del T LM formula from the counter flow heat exchangers. So, here you have to use this formula only. Similarly, this U is nothing but your overall heat transfer coefficient, area of the heat exchanger and this F is known as the correction factor. This correction factor has to be taken from the page number 158 to 161. Now go to the page number 158. Right here in the page number 158 it is given that correction factor plot for heat exchangers with one shell two, four or multiple tube passes. So, if the, in the problem it is given as one shell, two tube or four tube or six tube or eight tube, ten tube, whatever the tube passes may be. If it is given single shell, you have to use this graph to find the correction factor. To find the correction factor, before that you have to find P value, P equal to T2 minus T1 divided by T1 minus T1. From this formula, you just find out the P value and from this formula, just find out the R value. From these two values, just find out if in case P value is 0 0.4, then here the plot will become. If in case R value is 3, you have to choose, sorry, R value is 1.5, you have to choose this curve. So, this curve has to be selected and for 0 0.4, just when the plot cuts, so here the plot cutting point is there. So, according to that cutting point, just choose the value for correction factor. For this value, correction factor is 0 0.8. Okay. So, similarly, in the next page, it is given for correction factor plot for heat exchangers with the two shell passes and the four 6, 8, any multiple tube passes. Similarly, in the next page, correction factor plot for single pass cross flow heat exchangers. Okay? For different types of heat exchangers, different uh, graphs are given to choose the correct correction factors. Right? So, from the correction factor, you just choose the value of F and substitute here and substitute it here to find the value of Q. This is the basic formulas for LMTD method. Right? 
so similarly there are uh, other values are given here the approximate values of overall heat transfer coefficient for different combination combination of heat exchanger fluids the approximate u value has been given so in case in your problem if it is not given most of the problem this value will be given in case this value is not given in the problem just choose from this table for u value similarly for fouling resistance r value this value will not use mostly in the problem uh, in case if r value is you need in case you need the r value you can choose from this table and the formula for overall heat transfer in the last video itself we have derived you know that u value formula is given here okay right in this equation in case here there are one h not value is given and uh, r f not value is given and this term r not r i and the second term r f i and the third term h i okay there are h not r f not r f i and medium and h i so in case in the problem if the h i value is not given just omit this value in case r f i is not given just omit this value similarly in case r f not is given just omit this value so if you omit all the all these three values your formula will become 1 u not equal to 1 divided by h not plus r not divided by k ln r not divided by r i this is the final formula you have to take so according to the data is given in the problem you have to alter this formulas so 1 by ui and y 1 by u naught formula has to be altered right now take the first problem in the first problem it is given that in a counter flow in a counter flow double pipe heat exchanger oil is cooled from 85 degree celsius to 55 degree celsius okay by water entering at 25 degree celsius so the water is the cold fluid here it is enters at 25 degree celsius and the oil has to be cooled from 85 degree celsius to 55 degree celsius so here oil is the hot fluid and water is the cold fluid so, so in the given data first thing right given hot fluid and here right cold fluid so from our observation hot fluid is nothing but oil the cold fluid is water this is how you have to write the given data so hot fluid inlet temperature capital t1 equal to 85 degree celsius outlet temperature is t2 equal to 55 degree celsius from here okay so water entering at 25 degree celsius so t1 equal to 25 degree celsius so t2 value is not given in the problem then the mass flow rate of oil is 9800 9, kilogram per hour the oil is the hot fluid so m dot h value equal to 9800 kilogram per hour which is equal to 2.72 kg per seconds similarly under specific heat of oil is 2000 joule per kilogram kelvin so cph equal to 2000 joules per kilogram kelvin the mass flow rate of water is 8000 kilogram per hour so m dot of c equal to 8000 kilogram per hour which is equal to 2.22 kilogram per seconds okay similarly the specific heat of water is 4180 kilo kg kilogram joule specific heat is 4180 so here joule per kg kelvin so cpc equal to 4180 joule per kilogram kelvin okay so then in the problem it is given that the overall heat transfer coefficient is 280 watt per meter squared kelvin so just write u equal to 280 watt per meter squared kelvin and then find the length of the tube if the inner diameter is 0 0.1 meter so right so inner dire id equal to 0 0.1 meter and to find the length of the tube you have to find so what is the length of the tube this is the given data provided in the problem so now we are going to solve the problem in the first step right the solution in the first step we know that first thing from the last video itself you know the heat loss by the hot fluid 
is equal to heat gained by the cold fluid here i am writing heat loss by the here the hot fluid is oil which is equal to heat loss sorry here it is not heat loss it is heat gained by the cold fluid here cold fluid is water so for this problem heat loss by the oil is equal to heat gained by the water so q h equal to q c so this q formula you know m dot h into c p h into the hot fluid temperatures are capital t1 minus small t, so minus capital t2 which is equal to m dot c into c p c within the bracket small t1 minus small t2 okay just substitute all the values here the m dot h value is 2.72 kg per seconds into 2000 cph value and then 85 minus 55 degree celsius which is equal to 2.22 into cph value is 4180 into t2 value sorry here t2 minus t1 it should come so because Uh, the cold fluid temperature will rise along the length of the heat exchanger so t2 will be more than the t1 so in exit temperature will be greater than t1 so t2 minus t1 you have to substitute it here so here t2 value is not known it is not given in the problem so t1 value is only given in the problem that is the entry temperature of the water is given so it is 25 degrees celsius from this equation just solve the equation you can find out the t2 value the exit temperature of the cold fluid is 42.5 degrees celsius this is the first thing you have to find out while solving the problem by lmtd method in case you are going to solve the problem by lmtd method you have to know all the four temperatures if the in the problem if it is not given so for, from this formula you have to find the fourth temperature okay okay in the second step just find the heat transfer value so heat transfer heat transfer q equal to you know the formula mc cpc within the bracket small t2 minus small t1 which is equal to mh cph t1 minus t2 so this formula you know so any formula you can use to find out the q value if you use this formula and this formula if you use any formula the answer will be 162 into 10 to the power 3 watts this is the value for q okay this q value you have find out now next step from data book from data book page number 152 just refer your data book and write the uh, page number so you know that del t l m equal to now in the problem it is given that it is a counter flow double pipe heat exchanger so you have to take the formula for counter flow okay for del t m counter flow the formula is you can take from the data book t1 minus t2 minus t2 minus t1 divided by ln of t1 minus t2 divided by t2 minus t1 this is the formula you can take from the data book now substitute all the data as 85 minus 42.5 minus within the bracket 55 minus 25 divided by ln of 85 minus 42.5 divided by 55 minus 25 okay this is the values you have to substitute here and you will get del t m m s del t logarithmic mean temperature difference is 35.8 degree celsius okay now from the data book you know the formula u q equal to u a into del t l m now you know the u value is given in the problem itself so the u value is here it is given 280 watt per meter square kelvin that value you have to substitute 280 into area value is not given in the problem so just 
keep the area value as a and del t lm is 35.8 here the q value have find out no it is 162 into 10 to the power 3 from this equation just find out the value of area area equal to 16.16 meter squared here the heat trans heat is transferred from the heat exchanger tube surface area so here the area is surface area which is equal to pi into d into length okay so inner diameter so here in the problem itself the inner diameter is given as 0 0.1 into length so now you are going to find out the value of l so now you know the value for area it is 16.16 now l equal to 51.46 meters this is the final answer the length of the tube is 51.46 meters okay now go to the second problem in the second problem the second problem is in a double pipe heat exchanger hot fluid with a specific heat of 2300 joule per kg kelvin so write the given data given the specific heat of the hot fluid is that is cph equal to 2300 joule per kilogram kelvin enters at 380 degree celsius and leaves at 300 degree celsius so the hot fluid temperature is 380 degree celsius the exit temperature is 300 degree celsius here the cold fluid enters at 25 degree celsius leaves at 210 degree celsius so entry temperature is 25 degree celsius exit temperature is 210 degree celsius now calculate the heat exchanger area required for counter flow so it is given that counter flow heat exchanger for counter flow you have to find the area okay then in the next steps so that is in the second case what they have given is what would be the percentage of increase in area if the flow is per parallel so case one you have to find find the area required for counter flow in the case two you have to find the area required for parallel flow so then you have to find the area increase when you are using the parallel flow heat exchanger right so we will solve the problem step by step in the next line they gave take overall heat exchanger u equal to coefficient u equal to 750 watt per meter squared kelvin and the mass flow rate of hot fluid is that is m dot h equal to 1 kilogram per second okay you are going to find out the area for counter flow as well as parallel flow so solution case 1 in the case 1 just take it as counter flow okay counter flow you know the formula q equal to m dot h c p h into t1 minus t2 you can you can take the formula u m dot c c p c small t1 t2 minus small t1 in the problem the value for mass flow rate of cold fluid is not given so i am taking this formula to find out the value of q it is uh, m dot h is 1 and 2300 t1 is 380 380 minus 300 the formula answer will be 184 into 10 to the power 3 watts so this is the value of q so in the second step find out the del t m del t lm formula so from data book for counter flow heat exchanger del t lm formula has to be taken that is t1 minus small t2 minus of t2 minus small t1 the whole bracket divided by ln of t1 minus t2 divided by t2 minus small t1 so just substitute all the values here t1 is your 380 degree celsius minus 210 minus of 300 minus 25 degree celsius divided by ln of 380 minus 210 divided by 
थ्री हंड्रेड माइनस ट्वेंटी फाइव ओके जस्ट साल द प्रॉब्लम यू विल गेट द आंसर एस डेल्टी एल एम इक्वल टू डेल्टी ऑफ एल एम इक्वल टू टू वन एट पॉइंट थ्री डिग्री सेल्सियस ओके सो नाउ फाइंड आउट द यू हैव टू फाइंड आउट द एरिया वैल्यू सो यू नो द फॉर्मूला क्यू इक्वल टू यू ए इंटू डेल्टी एल एम इन दिस फॉर्मूला दस यू वैल्यू हियर इट इज वन एटी फोर इंटू टेन टू दि पवर थ्री ईक्वल टू सेवन फिफ्टी इंटू एरिया इंटू डेल्टी एल एम वैल्यू टू एटीन पॉइंट थ्री सो फ्रम दिस फॉर्मुला यू कैन फैंड अवट एरिया ईक्वल टू वन पॉइंट वन टू मीटर स्क्वेर ओके नव गो टू देश टू के टू इज पारल फ्लो पारल फ्लो फ्रम डेटा बुक् Just write delta L M formula for parallel flow. It is T one minus small T one minus T two minus small T two whole bracket divided by ln of T one minus small T one divided by T two minus small T two. Okay, just substitute all the values here. You will get delta L M. For parallel flow, as 193.1 degree Celsius. You know that now. Q equal to U A delta L M. U is 750 and delta L M is 193. So area value becomes 1.27 meter square. This is for parallel flow. So in the problem, it is it is asked to find out the percentage increase area when you are using parallel flow. heat exchanger instead of counter flow heat exchanger so the final thing percentage area sorry percentage area increase is equal to so if you use the parallel flow heat exchanger then it will be 1.27 minus 1.12 this is the area increased when you are using parallel flow instead of counter flow divided by the initial area is 1.12 so the percentage increase will be 13.3 percentage this is the final answer so percentage increase is 13 percentage when we are using the parallel flow instead of counter flow the area required for the heat exchanger will increased by 13 percentage okay so from this from this problem you can know when you are using a parallel flow and counter flow heat exchanger the area required for parallel flow heat exchanger for the same amount of heat exchange is more than the counter flow heat exchanger so the inference from this problem is the counter flow heat exchangers are more effective than the parallel flow heat exchangers okay thank you all in the next video we will see some more problems on heat exchangers